Welcome to Women of Worth, Women in the Word, where we are partnered with Women in Ministry TV, where I'm so excited to bring you a quick, powerful punch word today to allow you to be encouraged and to be empowered to understand the power that you actually possess within. That's right. It's time for you to tap further into the power that you possess within and operate in the full measure of what God has placed on the inside of you to make a difference and an impact in this world. So let's pray and get right into the word for today. Heavenly Father, we bless you and thank you and honor you for yet another opportunity to come before your presence to bring forth the power of your word word to all of those who have a listening ear. Father, we thank you right now that as we hear your word, that we will not just be listeners, but we will be doers, that we can operate in that dunamis, that dynamite power that we possess in and through you, through the resurrection power of Christ that lives within us. And we give you the glory and the praise and the honor in advance, and we count it all joy, and we count it all done in Jesus' name. Amen. That's right. I want to encourage you today with a quick word to allow you to understand that there is nothing. I need you to shout no thing. That's right. There is no thing and no one, no people, places, or things that you have experienced or gone through in your life that is not going to be used to work for your good, that is not going to be used for your benefit, that's not going to be used for a turnaround and a shifting and a shaking to allow you to be predestined and pre-purposed for the greatness that lives within you. So I want to give you this scripture of some Psalms 30, 1 through 7. We're going to walk through this thing verse by verse so that you understand who you are and what God has called for you to do in this set time, this set season to operate in the full measure of the power that you possess within. Psalms 31 through 7 verse 1 says, I give all the credit unto God. That's right. I'm reading from the message Bible that makes it more relevant to our vernacular in this set day and age, because it is time for you to understand the relevance of what you have experienced inside of your life of why you went through what you went through to prepare you for what you're about to get to. That's right. We give all credit unto God. Why? Cause it was God that got me out of this mess. Say somebody needs to shout. Thank you, God, for getting me out of my mess. That's right. Many of you have been guilty. We have all been guilty of at one time saying, God bless this mess. We want God to put a stamp of approval on what we have created or what we want done. But this is a, a thanksgiving of God getting them out of the mess that they know they put themselves inside of. And because of God's grace and his mercy that is unmerited, that we do not deserve because the cry was able to be given out, the results were able to be seen in their lives. So it goes on to say, you did not let me fall. You got me out of my mess and you didn't let my enemy gloat. That's right. The very thing that looks like it's up against, you're up against or the very people or things that looks like it's up against you. It looks like it is crowding you in. It looks like it is backing you into a corner. I'm here to let you know that it's only a matter of time before you see the shift and the turnaround that you will have full victory. Why? Because you already have the victory. You don't need to pray for victory. You are victory. And the sooner that you understand the power that you possess within, the quicker you can position yourself to understand that I'm coming out of this. And when I come out, I'm not just coming out just to get out with a keychain and a shirt to, and a hat that says that I went through it, but I'm coming out without the smell, without the look, without the stench of the actual pain or situation or the circumstance that I was in. Then it goes on to say, God, my my God, I yelled for help. I need you to understand you have to make it personal. If you are looking for someone else to be able to do what only you can do, if you're looking for somebody else to get you out, if you're looking for someone else to pull you through, I'm here to let you know the only one that can get you through is you through the power that you possess within. My God, my God, I yelled for help. And it was you that put me back together again. I know many of you are sitting here soaking and licking your wounds full of disappointment and hurt because of who and what didn't come to your rescue. But I'm here to let you know, according to Psalms 1, 2 to 3, that it declared that it was God that put them back together again. It was God that pulled me out of the grave and gave me another chance. See, many people like to say God is a God of a second chance, but the truth of the matter is your second chance was blown by the time you were two years old. Your, your second chance has been come and gone. He's not a God of a second chance. He's a God of another chance for those who know how to call upon his name, not just outwardly, but within, because he's giving you the power 
power. He's giving you the holy helper and assistance within that will give you the supernatural wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and strength to come out of what the very thing is for most of you put your own self inside of. And then he goes on to say, when I was down and out, uh, you were the one that brought me out. So the truth of the matter is a lot of times we are looking for something and someone else, but the truth of the matter is that God has given us a preset destiny that when we understand the power of calling upon his name and allowing uh, the super to be put on our natural, to be able to allow us to walk in the full measure of the power that he's placed inside of us, that's the very thing that's going to see you through to your other side. Then it goes on to say all the saints, not saints, some of you, but all of you sing your heart out to God. I know you're trying to call on the men. I know you're trying to call on the government. I know you're trying to call on family, but listen, I need you to know how to call out to the very one who is the solutionist, the very one who is the strategist, the very one who is the answer, the very one who has already made a way out before you even got into it. And then it says, thank him to his face. What does that mean? Know how to have a intimate relationship, a relationship with God. It's not to be put on for show. It is not something that should be fabricated. It's not something for everyone else to see. It's for you to know and to have when no one else can see, when no one else is around. Thank him face to face. Our relationship with God should be personal. It should be intimate. It should be one that is had when nothing and no one is around. It should be the one that's had when you're not inside of the four walls. It's the one that should be had when you're in the midst of your midnight hour. We're going to get to that midnight hour in a, in a few verses. But the truth of the matter is you got to know how, how to have a personal relationship and call on the very one that already has the answer to your or the solution to your problem. Then it goes on to say, he may get angry once in a while, but across a lifetime, there is only love. That's right. We are literally fresh off the heels of, uh, of uplifting and honoring what we call resurrection weekend and holy week that we uplift the power of what Christ did for us. That even though we didn't deserve it, God gave us another chance to come into direct fellowship with him, to be able to come to his presence face to face with full boldness and confidence of understanding that he is and only he is the way out he is the way over and he is the way into what we like to call your better life god is full of agape unconditional unmerited infinite love which means love that you don't deserve love that you can't work for love that you can't try to bribe your way in or out of but the love that he has given you is because of what he has placed on it inside of you that he is yearning to reconnect with you, but you will only know that when you make it personal, you will only know that when you make it, uh, um, intimate, you will only know that when you are strategic and intentional about forging a relationship with him personally. And then here we go with the weeping, but this, this translation gives it to us in the more relevant terminology. It says the nights of crying your eyes out will give way to your days of laughter. This is why it is known that laughter is medicine for our soul because the very thing that you thought was going to take you out, that was going to take you under is the very thing that is going to allow you to arise, come up out of the ashes and take you over into your preset place of power, your preset place of dominion, your preset place of authority. It is time for you to understand that even the nights of crying your eyes out was doing nothing but fertilizing your future, that it was allowing that which was already predestined and pre-purposed for you to do be have and become it was allowing that thing to grow underground the very thing that looked like it was burying you was the very thing that was doing nothing but planning you the very thing that looked like it was going to drown you out was the very thing that was giving you the nutrients and the fertilization for your future that you needed so that by the time you got there it will sustain and remain not just for your lifetime but for generations to come it is saying you're crying you're fertilizing was giving way to your days of laughter. It's time for you to start laughing again. It's time for you to start smiling again. It's time for you to start breathing again. It's time for you to start living again. That's right. Your crying is making way for your days of laughter and not just a blue moon of a day of laughter, but a lifetime of laughter. Know how to laugh your way out. Know how to praise your way out. Know how to see yourself already out and not just hoping, wishing, and begging, but thanking him for the end of it 
because he is Alpha and Omega. He's already seen the ending before the beginning. It is just time for you to know that he's already declared that you are a winner. It's time for you to understand that your race has been rigged and he's already predestined and pre-designed for you to come out as the champ. Why? Because you serve an undefeated champ. He never fails us. He never has done it before. He's not going to start right here. He's not going to start with you. So you got to know how to praise your way out, laugh your way out, allow the, the joy of the Lord to be your strength. Then it goes on to say, when things were going great, I crowd and I've got it made. I'm God's favorite. When you understand that God favors you, not because of you, but because of him within you, you are a glory carrier. What does that mean? You have a seed that God has placed inside of you that is attached to a preset, a predetermined assignment to make a difference and make an impact in this world that allow even the very ones that seem unreachable to be reached, to allow the very ones that seem untouchable to be touched in and through the seed that he's placed on it inside of you. So when we like to say that God smiles down on me, God favors me, I am God's favor. When you are a child of the most high God, when you are carrying his glory, when you are carrying greatness that he has instilled and implanted and imparted inside of you, he's able to uplift you and favor you because you are an extension of him. It's not about you, but it's in spite and despite you. And when you're able to understand that, that's what will cause you to live even a more surrender and the more submissive of life because you understand it's not about the greatness of me it's about the greatness of thee within me and that's the thing that he's looking to connect to that will allow me to get to what he has predestined and that's my place of purpose that's my place of peace that's my place of joy that's my place of power that I'm supposed to live from many people are chasing after the very thing that they're supposed to embody they're looking for peace instead of declaring I am peace and peace is being still they're looking for healing instead of declaring I am the healed that's just protecting my health they're looking for breakthrough instead of saying I am the embodiment of breakthrough when you understand the power of what you possess in and through the acceptance of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior the very one that defeated death I'm here to let you know once you de defeat death what is left I'm telling you you become truly unstoppable when you're able to look death inside of its faith and be able to ask it where is your sting oh grave where is your victory you couldn't hold me down. You couldn't stop me. You couldn't block me. You couldn't hinder me. You could not restrict me. It is my time to propel. It is my time to catapult into my place of greatness because I have been crowned with righteousness to carry forth the glory of God to make an impact in this land. And then it closes out on the verse seven. We're going to complete it with verse seven. It's not the whole passage, but we're going to uh, end it off with this one. He made me king of the mountain. Then you look the other way way and then I fell to pieces but he lifted me up I'm here to let you know that no matter how deep how low your valley experience may seem there is a mountain that God has prepared and predestined and pre-purposed for you to operate according to so the very thing that you are able to rise up out of that he's allowing you to have the insight and the foresight to go back and give the same set of principles kingdom principles to be able to lift others up to bring them up to bring them out so that they too can operate in their place of purpose. I'm here to let you know there is no pain that will be wasted. There is no tears that will not be used as fertilizer. What God has allowed, God didn't uh, uh, preset for you to experience the pain. He didn't put that pain on you. He didn't put the, the sickness on you, but he will use what you have gone through to allow his glory to be seen upon you to show what it looks like to go through, but to come out and to come out pure as gold, what it looks like to go from the valley low to the mountain top and not feel like I have arrived. I have it all together, but truly just to give your voice more amplification and magnification uplift of uplifting the glory of God. That was the very thing that brought you up. The very thing that got you out of your mess. The very thing that was, that allowed you to be put back together again. The very thing that turned your weeping into your place of reaping. It is time for you to understand the power that you possess. It is time for you to tap into it. And it is time for 
you to operate in the full measure of what you have been predestined with God's perfect will is and his design for your life has been once you begin to tap into it then you will not any longer say God why me why this why now but you say God why not me why not this why not now who else it is me that was able to defeat death so that I can look it back in his face and allow it to know that nothing can stop block and hinder the power of God that I possess within me and then go show other people the power that they possess to allow the very places they that they thought that were going to take them out to allow them to use it to take them over into their place of purpose their place of power their place of productivity that they can go from their valley low to their mountaintop to go back and reach others in the valley and bring them out over and into their promised land that place that is flowing with milk and honey full of resources full of provision full of power full of every single thing that you need to live this life for life and godliness do you believe and receive that word on today well if so i want you to join me as we get ready to pray and solidify the fact that we believe it we receive it and we're ready to walk in the full measure thereof that's right this is the season where it's time for you to understand what you have and put it to use stop hoping wishing and begging and start believing and once you believe it's determined by your level of action if you say you believe but there is no works to your belief there's no action to your faith then that's truly unbelief but it's time for you to believe why when you look at yourself in the mirror every day and you see you made it out of that you see you still have your right mind you still see that you do have the ability to turn that frown upside down into a smile that's what allows you to put God's word into action because you see what he's been able to do on you in you and through you and it's time for to take that to higher heights to take that to, to, to new measures to take that to new dimensions that your voice can be amplified to reach more people for his kingdom so if you believe that join me as we get ready to pray and solidify what God has already predestined and predetermined for us to be and that is victorious let us pray heavenly father we bless you and thank you and honor you once again for allowing us to come into your presence to uplift you to praise you and to thank you because you are the very one you are the only one that will allow us to take our mess and turn it into a message to allow every test to become our testimony and father today we thank you for the opportunity to surrender and submit our pity parties to surrender and submit even our weaknesses to surrender and submit our doubt our worry our fear our anxieties our disbelief all oppressions depression oppression suppression and declare that this is our time to go from uh, weeping to reaping that we can walk in the full measure of what you have already had pre-designed pre purpose pre-orchestrated and pre-ordained for our life and that is the better life in and through Christ father we believe it we receive it and we are making a bold declaration that from this day forth we will walk in the full measure thereof despite of what we see despite of what we may feel within we understand 